So Wednesday evening and Thursday is Purim, and it is a great holiday, in part because I love the tradition of Mishloach Manot, of giving small gifts to each other. And as I have written in other places, I think that this year in particular, offering Mishloach Manot may be a small antidote to the tremendous sense of isolation that we have been feeling due to COVID. The small kindnesses of giving or receiving a joyful gift, a small act of connection, will shine some light into the darkness for many who have been feeling the mental health challenges of COVID. It's a reminder that we are not alone. We are part of a community of caring and connection. And Purim is also fun because it's just frivolous. Tomorrow is the traditional Purim carnival, adjusted since it was being planned during the Omicron surge, but festive nonetheless it will be. And of course, Wednesday evening is Megillah Madness, a Bethel tradition, and our shul parody tradition was even mentioned one time on an episode of The West Wing. And wasn't it nice when all of world affairs could be wrapped up and resolved in just 45 minutes each week? But Purim is also a great holiday because we are ready to read the incredible text of Migilat Esther. The book of Esther is a flamboyant, even farcical tale of good and evil, and its characters are caricatures of human virtue and vice. Hume, Haman is the ultimate villain. Ahasuerosh, a fool. Mordechai is an unsaleable tzaddik. Esther, a paragon of virtue and beauty. As children, we are captivated by these characters in all of their unambiguous glory. We try on their personae and imagine ourselves as absolutely courageous or absolutely cowardly, beautiful or ugly, good or bad. As adults, we learn to laugh at the absurdities of such absolutes which leaves little room for the subtleties and uncertainties of the world that we know the world to be. Yet a closer look at the Megillah reveals shades of gray that illuminate our own struggles to act with hope and courage and moral responsibility in a complex and often terrifying world. This it was inspired in part by an article I read by Rabbi Sharon Cohen Ansfeld, who is the president of Hebrew College. And I have long believed the most important verse in the entire Megillah is the verse that represents the pivotal turning point in the Purim story. It comes near the bottom, near the end of chapter 4, when Mordechai sends a message to Esther urging her to reveal her identity to King Ahasuerus and plead on behalf of the Jewish people. In chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, it says, Mordechai had this message delivered to Esther. Do not imagine that you of all the Jews will escape with your life by being in the king's palace. On the contrary, if you keep silent in this crisis, relief and deliverance will come to the Jews from another quarter, while you and your father's house will perish. And who knows, he continues, and who knows, perhaps you have attained the royal position for just such a crisis. Miudea, im la'at kazot higat lemalchut. Remarkably, Mordechai's message to Esther hinges on two simple words that promise nothing but change everything. Miodea, Mordechai says, who knows? Who knows if it wasn't for just such a time that you became queen? These are the words that set Esther in motion, that inspired her to take action in spite of her own resistance, in spite of her fears about her own fate, and in spite of her doubts about her own position and power in the king's court. Who knows? This is hardly the kind of message that we're looking for to motivate us to act with courage in crisis. We generally look for messages that inspire a little more confidence 
This is precisely why you became the queen. Your actions will make all the difference. This is why God put you in this position. Nothing happens without a purpose. Might be a more motivating tone. But the world of Purim, not unlike our world, is a world without guarantees and certainties or signs from God. It is a world in which we don't know, can't know, the limits or possibilities of our own power. It is a world in which we can't be sure where our actions will lead and whether our efforts will be for naught. It is a world in which if we are able to discern God's presence at all, it is through our own faltering attempts at courage and compassion. Often when we say, who knows, mia dea, it's accompanied by a gesture of resignation, a shrug of the shoulders, an upward glance, as if uncertainty and not knowing relieves us of responsibility. How can we effectively respond to poverty in developing countries? Who knows? It's too complicated for me to get involved. How real is the threat of global warming and what can we do to address it? Who knows? We just have to wait and see what happens. What can we do as Jews to end the war in Ukraine or fight anti-Semitism? Who knows? It sort of lets us off the hook. All too often in our own lives, who knows becomes an excuse for inaction or a pretext for paralysis. I, even when we truly have no idea what we could do to make a real difference, let me tell you a small act I witnessed this week. It was a small gesture which had a profound effect on me for its symbolism, and I think others that were in the room with me. For those who were at Shul last week, and I will simply assume that if you weren't here, you were davening someplace else, that, that you know that we dedicated these beautiful new Torah covers which are being sent to the Czech Republic and will sit on the Torah scrolls at the Great Synagogue in Pilsen. With the help of Bethel member Michelin Amir and local artist Shirley Waxman, these covers are a gift and a gesture of connection between Bethesda and Pilsen. Wednesday, last Wednesday evening, there was a beautiful ceremony at the Czech Embassy in which I was honored to present the covers to the Czech ambassador. And about 100 people were there, but the symbolism was not in my action but that of Ambassador Komachek. As I drove up to the embassy, the Ukrainian flag was flying along outside the Czech flag. And in the room where the ceremony took place, a wall had been painted blue and yellow, the colors of the Ukrainian flag. It was a powerful and overt symbol of unity as war is actively taking place in Europe. For us, it can sort of feel like a headline, but for the Czechs, it is a war in their neighborhood. Miodea, who knows what a symbolic act can do? Who knows what real action can lead to? In the remarkable exchange between Mordechai and Esther, something quite different happens. Who knows becomes not an excuse for inaction, but an invitation. Consider the possibility, says Mordechai, that you are here for a reason. Consider that there is something bigger and more important than your fear, that you have more powerful than you have more power than you imagine. Consider the possibility that it is up to us to act out of love and responsibility for each other in order to make room for God's presence in this world. Esther's willingness to act on a possibility is what, ha is what makes her a prophetess, according to the Midrash tradition. A few, a few verses later, when she enters the king's court, she's frightened and even terrified, and yet prepared to risk her own life. The text of the Megillah says that she clothed herself in royal garments, but a linguistic idiosyncrasy in the verse leads the Gemara to suggest that what really was happening at that moment was that she clothed herself in the Shekhinah, in God's divine presence. In other words, 
This is a prophecy from the ground up, not a heavenly voice intruding in human affairs, but a human act, a human action, full of doubts and trepidation, yet determined. That's what brings God's presence down to earth. Her actions brought God into the royal court. As we walk through life and in the corridors of power or the comforts of friendships, who knows the impact that a little boldness may have? Call it chutzpah or determination, but Esther's actions saved the Jews of Shushan and the kingdom. Who knows if it wasn't just for a little, for such a, if it wasn't for just such a time that she became queen. This is the legacy that Mordechai and Esther bequeathed to us, a dual legacy of humility and hope, of radical uncertainty and radical responsibility. And Purim is the holiday of Hester Panim, the hiddenness of God's face, but our actions are what reveal the path to saving lives. Just as Esther doubted her ability dis despite her position, I am sure we also hesitate at bold action, but I am confident through our actions, we choose interdependence over isolation, responsibility over retreat. Miodea can turn us towards each other and discover the promise of sweetness in the face of uncertainty and love in the face of fear. So let's send treats to our neighbors and friends and expand the circle of concern even further. Let's find the courage to take bold actions when needed. Because, Miodea, who knows? Consider the possibility that this is why you are here today. Shabbat Shalom.